Sunday, everyone. Hello again. Uh, it's a lovely Tuesday. Uh, it's been overcast all day, but really warm, which has been really nice. I got to sit out in the yard today and visit, and it was really, it was really lovely. Um, so, uh, Tansei from Treaties of Territory. Uh, again, I always like to start by acknowledging the land upon which we stand, because it's important to know where you are, uh, so you know where you're going, because uh, if you don't know where you're starting, where do you know where you're going to end up? Um, so I acknowledge uh, all of the people of Treaty 7. Um, I, of course, acknowledge the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai, and Bagani, the Sarsitane from Sitsina, and the Stony Nakota from Morley, which includes Chiniki, Bears Pop, and Wesley First Nation. Um, I was actually, I've been out there quite a bit, just uh, on that particular territory, on that region, um, and I've been going to do um, a lot of sweats on that, on that, in that area, and um, it's really just been opening up my heart and for the first time in a really long time I like I let it out I was crying I was crying and I was trying to figure out why was I crying and I was crying for I was crying for my ancestors I was trying I was really crying for you know not only um, what's happened to my family in the past and what's brought me here and how thankful I am to be in this time but I was also uh, crying for my family members that are still here that are still alive I was crying for my future generations, my kids, and I felt like just overcome with emotion of all that we're going through um, right now and the legacy that we're leaving for our kids and how our ancestors would be looking down at us. Um, so when I was in the lodge, I could hear my musha, my great grandfather singing with me and it was so powerful and I was so thankful for that. Um, and it was just that reminder of um, how we need to reflect and how, you know, they're with us. And sometimes we carry a lot of that pain and trauma, but we also carry a lot of that strength with us. And so um, I'm very thankful uh, to the Stonies for keeping that land um, where where I really had those profound experiences. And I'm so, so very thankful for the people who uh, have taken ownership of that land and cleaned it up and um, have really created that safe space for all of us. And so I'm very humbled. Whenever I acknowledge the land, I, I acknowledge that history, that all of the stories that are there, and you can feel it as you're walking on the land. You can feel the way that, you know, the standing people, the trees talk to us. I was almost, also really overcome by the trees. Um, they're, they're known as our standing people. Uh, they've been watching over us for generations. We have a very reciprocal relationship with the trees. And so um, when we breathe, when we take those deep breaths, we remember that we breathe with the tree and they are our ancestors, just like we are theirs. Um, but to think of all of the things that have been happening to our standing people, to our trees, and they don't have voices that can be heard like ours, but they still have very strong voices. And um, I was just overcome because I felt like they were speaking. I felt like they were calling, like they were singing. And so um, I'm just very grateful and very humbled to be here in North Kansas. Like it, it feels like this is my home. Um, I've been here for many, many moons, um, raising my children here. And it just, it feels good. I feel safe in this space. And a lot of that has to do with the river. This is why it's North Kansas, where the Bow River and the Elbow River come together, which means elbow. Um, but there's something really powerful about the way that energy flows through this place. It gives us this sense of flow, the sense of, you know, continuation on and on and on. And it holds a different energy here. And I'm so thankful to be part of that. Um, oh, I also acknowledge, of course, <laughs> Métis Region 3. This is why I proudly wear my Métis sash to act as that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture. And um, sometimes we forget how much um, responsibility we put on um, you know indigenous people or people of color to really uh, educate and re-educate uh, people who are educators are used to it but um, when we're going through all of this uh, this kind of upheaval when it comes to uh, you know people of color or indigenous people um, and I think it's important to understand that we're all a community and that everyone needs to learn from each other that we all have things to learn and ways to grow. And if we criticize someone, we'll just shut them down and it doesn't offer them an opportunity to learn. And so um, in the spirit of welcoming everybody in, of uh, bringing everybody together uh, in a way of understanding, in a way of building and learning from each other and nurturing each other and growing together. Uh, of course, I like to share the Cree welcome song. Uh, traditionally, when we sing songs, we sing in rounds of four. 
down to the four directions of the medicine wheel. But this song is uh, staying in rounds of three to keep the circle open and welcoming so that everyone completes the circle tonight. Because in the circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning. There's no end. No one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to really honor each other for our voices and for all of the journeys that we're on because they lead us down different paths, but eventually we come to the same place, which is our heart medicine and our spirit medicine. And so um, it really teaches us about honoring every single person's voice and how every single person's voice has weight in our community. We need to honor everyone's gift because if you don't honor your own gift, then not only are you missing out on your awesomeness, but you're not contributing in the way that you need to to the community. And this builds a lot of hurt and it builds a lot of contempt. And so it's really about finding your path and carving that out for yourself, but not forcing people on paths that they don't belong because we don't feel good on those paths that we don't belong. And this song is really about bringing together community. It's about honoring everybody's voice, everybody's place. And uh, I honor the Napaha family for uh, sharing this song. Um, and they've been keeping this song alive for many, many generations, <clears throat> which has been tough because for many generations, we couldn't speak our traditional languages or share our songs or share our stories. And um, for all of our, well, not all, <laughs> but a good portion of our songs and stories and ceremonies and um, you know traditional ways of creating, for those things to remain, it really shows the resilience of our people. And um, now in these times, we need that resilience. We need that resilience of spirit, of coming together, of connecting, of sharing, and really being understanding and inclusive and ushering in a new era of that understanding, um, of that holistic way of looking at the world to know that everything is a cycle. This isn't the beginning, this isn't the middle, this is the end. It's, it's part of a cycle and it's gonna continue to move forward whether we wanna be part of it or not. And so um, of course we can't, revisit it we can't go backwards so we can only move forward and that's the whole thing about the circle and so um when i sing this song it's about honoring everybody's journey how we're all together moving forward in a good way and so mia sin which is the Cree welcome song um it doesn't just mean welcome it also means beautiful so i'm gonna stand up to sing i'm not gonna talk about this whole mess behind <coughs> Mia sin, mia se, ha se mi na, ha se mi na, e fe ta kute, mwa go ma ga, Hi, hi everyone, and welcome to the circle. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, before we get started, of course, I wanted to smudge just to uh, put everybody in the, the right space. So normally I have my smudge stuff kind of set up over here, but right now I've got, got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I have my smudge off to the side, so it's off camera, but um, in the east on the table, I have sweet grass. This is my sweet grass, which smells lovely. And um, that's just our, our mind. It teaches us to honor the East, honor Grandfather Sun, because that's, of course, where he rises, honor the springtime, honor our children, honor our mind, and honor the power of fire, because that's uh, truly what kind of wakes everybody up in that morning, that, that big ball of fire in the sky. Grandfather Sun really guides us on our journey, and Sweetgrass guides us on our journey as well. If we're ever making a big decision and we want to really um, – Honor that decision. We want to bring in all of our ancestors with that decision. We'll burn sweet grass. Uh, it actually makes us think a lot more clearly. Um, it's really wonderful for just focus, anxiety, anything like that. You can either burn it or you can also put it in tea. But um, when we uh, bundle it, we do it in a braid, and that's very, very intentional. So every strand of the blade, a braid, has seven blades of sweet grass in it to represent our seven teachings and our seven generations. And when we braid them together, it's braiding together all of those generations. It's braiding together all of those teachings. It's teaching us to really acknowledge and understand them. And so we have the uh, path, which is honoring our ancestors, the seven generations before us, um, honoring all of the teachings that they've left for us, all that they've done to bring us to this moment, all of the hardships that they have had to endure so that we didn't have to. Um, we also honor our future generations, so seven generations that are yet to be born or that have been born, and we are um, really maintaining, you know, a world for them. Uh, and then, of course, that who let Hunter Braid is really about us. It's really about acknowledging that we are part of that ancestor. We're somebody's seventh generation. We are leaving that legacy. We are honoring that past. And so when we make decisions like that, we make way better decisions because it's not just about us in this moment. It's about honoring that path and making our ancestors proud, but also leaving a legacy for our future generations so that they have a better world than us. Um, and so this is why it's so important when we make decisions to think in that way. We don't think in voting cycles of four years. We think, of course, in terms of generations because that's truly how we need to make those decisions. Um, so, yeah, speak grass. And I uh, want to share my teachings. These these are just my teachings. Um, they're Kriya and Anishinaabe. Uh, and um, if I know the equivalent in other uh, nations, I'll share that. But for the most part, it, it's really about understanding that, you know, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. Everybody has different teachings. Everybody has a different background. Everybody has uh, different ways um, of really um, understanding and connecting with the world around us. So when we look at the medicine wheel, it's going to be different depending on whose medicine wheel it is, uh, but it, it's really about finding your path. So not every single path is exactly the same, and this is why there's no right or wrong, it's just different. But it's really about acknowledging that everybody's journey will lead us into different places, but connect us in, the, in, a, in a way as well. Um, and so I'm just going to share that. Oh my goodness, what is this? Um, the next one that we have is Peter. I'm going to show my Peter. Peter, I always lay out all my medicines, even if I'm not using them all, just to acknowledge and understand that balance that we're bringing into the circle. And so cedar, um, it's really wonderful medicine. It's our body medicine. It connects us to the summertime. Uh, it connects us to this, uh, just that warmth of the earth, how the earth is really, really warm. And even though life is when um, life begins in the spring, it actually grows to fruition over the summer. So it's about our physical body and how we connect to the physical earth. It's teaching us how to honor um, our plant people, our standing people, which are our trees, our animals, our crawlers, which are the bugs, um, you know, all of the birds. Everything around us is all connected. We are all so reliant on each other, and it reminds us of that connection that we have to each other. Um, and it's really, really lovely. It, Almost smells kind of piney, but um, it's really awesome. It's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. It's got an antihistamine in it. It's got a numbing agent. So if you chew on it and put it against your gums, it actually numbs your bum gums. Or you can like rub it on your skin. And it's if you've got like a rash, it helps you. It's good for everything. It's awesome. I love cedar, and so I swear by it. Uh, but that's our physical uh, body. It reminds us of the connection, the deep connection that we have to Mother Earth and that we have to our own physical body. That also reminds us. 
how to stay grounded and balanced because we need to have our roots strong in the ground. This is what the trees teach us to really have those deep roots and those deep connections to the earth and to each other and to ourselves so that we can stand up strong. Um, the next medicine that we have, which is the medicine that we'll be using, uh, this is sage. I want to thank my friend Bailey for gifting me this lovely, lovely sage. The reason it's hooked like this is because it was in a bag as it was drying. So, um, but you know, whatever works. Uh, so this is buffalo sage. Um, picked not far from here. I believe she actually picked it down uh, on the blood reserve. And so I'm really, really thankful and humbled that she brought this up. She's a phenomenal dancer, by the way, and an amazing, amazing young woman. I'm very humbled and blessed for all of the people that are in my life. And so, um, yeah, I'm just going to pull the stage off the stem. Uh, and again, that little teaching about when we gift it to people, we always leave it on the stem uh, because when we pull off the stage, it actually, it holds our energy, it holds our intention. And we're not going to dictate how somebody's going to pray or how somebody's going to use the medicine. So out of respect for them, we always leave it on the stem before we get it to them. And so I'm just going to pre-crunch it and then black it, roll it here. Excellent. <clears throat> uh, and now the last medicine is tobacco. Oh, oh sorry. Didn't do the teachings around sage. I can kind of like forget. Uh, so sage being the women's medicine, it's connected to the water. It's connected to grandmother moon. Because if we look at a medicine wheel, it's all about balance, right? So we have grandfather sun in the east, grandmother moon in the west. We have the earth um, in the south, and then we have the sky in the north. And so it's really about acknowledging that balance between everything and everyone. Um, and so when we acknowledge that, it, it just puts us, uh, more in our entire being, not just one thing, but everything, everything around us is connected. So it's really important um, that the sage being connected to Grandmother Moon, Grandmother Moon is connected to the water because she pushes the tides in and out. Uh, it was said that she's the one who created the tides and pushed them in and out and created the rivers and the streams and the ponds and the lakes. Um, and it was Grandmother Moon's influence that created that life that we need because that's what water is. Water is life. Uh, without it, we wouldn't be here. So it's really, really important to acknowledge that. Um, and the reason it's connected to the woman is because when we look at Grandmother Moon's cycle, uh, she cycles in 28 days, just like our own moon cycle. And so it's that reminder every 28 days that we're sacred. Um, but also, they, it's the reminder of our connection to community. So it's that roundabout way of reminding us that you know, everything is a circle, everything is cyclical, um, that our heart medicine is just as important as anything else. Uh, and it's our connection to, you know, our emotions. And our emotions are like, this is why whenever we get frustrated or upset or sad, we cry, we leak from our face, because it's our emotions trying to get up. But it's about really honoring our tears and acknowledging the fact uh, that we have those emotions, because without them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be connected. We wouldn't have strong families or friends or, you know, relationships. And so we need those emotions to honor each other. And then uh, the last medicine is tobacco. And I usually have my tobacco wrap. Um, so tobacco is our spirit medicine. So it's the way we pray. We can sprinkle it on the ground to give thanks to people in our lives or to give thanks for things in our lives or to ask for help from creator. Um, when we sprinkle it, it's, it's about giving something back before we take anything. And so, well, it's like anything in life. If you take and take, there's going to be nothing left. So it's really about gifting something back because anytime we pick our traditional medicines, we always give something back to the earth and usually it's tobacco. Even when I'm planting my garden, I put tobacco in the garden and it's awesome because it's high in phosphorus, potassium and nitrogen. Plants grow back faster. Awesome. So not only are you acknowledging the earth, you're acknowledging the plants, you're acknowledging the spirit that everything holds, but by giving that tobacco back, you're saying a prayer for them as well. Uh, and then let's see here. Um, the other thing about tobacco is that uh, when we're using it uh, as prayer, we gift it to people. So we gift it, you know, um, elders or knowledge keepers or thing, uh, things like that as a protocol to uh, say thank you from our spirit to their spirit. And it's just our way to connect. Um, and in my teachings, tobacco, we actually don't take into our bodies because it actually makes us sick. We pray with it. So in pipes, we we'll puff on it and we'll uh, blow it over in our hand and bring it over our body or we'll blow it down our body to clean ourselves, to cleanse ourselves, to pray with it, but we won't actually breathe it in because it's too strong of a medicine for us. This is why people will get sick. And this is why sometimes people get addicted to smoking. It's not that they're actually addicted to that substance. It's that they're hungry for that connection to creator and they have a lot of trauma 
that's blocking that connection. That's any addiction. And so once you realize what that trauma is, what that hurt is, what that pain is, you're able to let those addictions go. Um, and this, it's about healing. It's about really reconnecting to who you are in your core and letting things go and healing. Um, and I know because I smoked for many years and um, yeah, <laughs> I actually was able to quit smoking because I would quit, start, quit, start. But once I finally quit smoking, it was because I was dealing with all of that pain, all that trauma, all of those things I was carrying, not just my pain, but that intergenerational trauma, my mom's pain and my cook and my grandmother's pain that I was carrying with me. Uh, and once I was able to kind of forgive them and realize that that pain wasn't ours to carry, it wasn't ours to bear, it was something that was thrust upon us because of the residential school system and colonization, uh, I was able to forgive and let that go. And um, of course, as soon as I did that, everybody started giving me tobacco. So <laughs> I honor that. I honor tobacco every time I get it because that's, that's saying thank you from spirit. And it means I'm on the right path, which is beautiful. And it's a gift. And so um, before we get started, I'm just going to take off my jewelry just because anything that's metal usually holds energy and I don't want to hold any energy. I want to let it all go. All right. So I'm going to light this on here. I'm going to put it down so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So this is my lovely smudge bowl. All right. If I can get it light. Oh, there we go. I'm just lighting that. Now, there's no right or wrong way to smudge. It's whatever feels good to you. I just let that light. And then I fan it with my hand because you don't want to blow on it because your breath is your life and your life is precious and you don't want to waste that for anybody. I just fan it with my hand. I go in. And then um, when... When you smudge, it's just, uh, it's about cleansing. So um, it's our way to pray. And all prayer is, is like intention. You're just setting your intention. You're getting rid of the stuff that you don't want to carry. And you're bringing in the stuff that you need um, or that you're very thankful for. So I think it's really important to live in gratitude. Whenever we smudge, it's about giving thanks for the different things that we do have and letting go of the things that we don't need. So the first thing I do is I smudge my hands. So that anything that I'm carrying, I can release, I can get rid of. And then I bring it over my body four times to honor the four directions in my body. I smudge my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that goes, crosses my path, but also so I can remain open. I think it's really important to have an open mind because uh, your teachings might change throughout your lifetime, but it's really about being open to those possibilities. I smudge my ears. So I can listen twice as much as I speak before I get two ears more. But also, I'm very thankful for my hearing. And I'm thankful for all of the messages that Creator sends me. I switch my eyes so I can see all of the beauty Creator has made in the world. Also, I'm very thankful for my vision. So for my eyes and for the sight I have to see everything in front of me. And all the gifts. Sometimes we need to be able to see those gifts to appreciate them. So. You know, feel such my nose so I can smell danger and cooking. Also, so I can be like the bear and use all of my senses to appreciate the world around. Smudge my mouth so I can speak true and kind words that are helpful and benefit to everyone. Smudge my throat because I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime for my singing voice, but also because I continue to give voice to the voiceless. And what creator gave me a big voice when I use it. I smudge my lungs, so I breathe good, clean air. I have asthma, so um, I to smudge my lungs. Uh, also, it's allergy season, so uh, my lungs have been a little wheezy. <laughs> I smudge my heart, so I can remember to be kind and compassionate, show unconditional love everyone around me, but also so I can be gentle with myself, friends of my family. I smudge my stomach so all of the foods that I eat this day will nourish my body. I also smudge my womanhood because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother in this time. I'm a two spirit woman, so I kind of occupy both realms at times, um, but physically on this journey, I am a woman. And then I smudge my shoulders. 
and my back. And so I give thanks for all of the responsibilities that creators gifted to me. Much my hands and my arms. So I can do the good work that creators put me here to do. And my hands a little bit extra. I'm an artist. I've been doing a lot of art. <laughs> I touch my legs. So I walk this red road in this way. And I smudge my feet. So I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth, treading lightly upon her. And I honor her with every step. And then if there's anywhere else that needs a little extra love, so right, my upper back is a little sore and my hips are always sore because my hips are ripped. Um, and then I'm also going to hold the smoke in my heart. I'm going to hold people that I want to pray for, people that I want to send love and appreciation to, people that um, I know need my prayers, or even society, the things that are happening in the world right now that need those extra prayers. We hold them in our heart, and we bring the smoke to our heart to really honor them and um, pray for them. And that's the best intention, so things happen in a gentle way. And then when you're done, you just say, Thank you, or hi, hi, or which, or merci, or um, gracia, or xie, or makicho. Um, however, you say thank you in your language. It's really important to remember certain things in your own language, whether it only be please, thank, and thank you. <laughs> it's always good to have that gratitude and that ability to ask. Thanks. All right. So uh, that being said. I'm going to share the four directions song. So this is known as um, When They Aho. It's also, you can find it on YouTube as the Cherokee Morning Song. And I learned it as the four directions song because in it you can hear the four winds and it honors the four directions of the medicine wheel. So it's sang in four rounds. And the last round, um, we just kind of taper off four times just to honor those four winds passing all together. Um, and it's, uh, it's just a beautiful song. It's a, a way to guide us and teach us to really remember all of those portions of our lives. You know, remember that we are a balance of our mind and our heart, our physical body and our spirit. We're a balance of our childhood, our adolescence, our adulthood, and then eventually our elderly years. Um, and really to acknowledge all of the seasons, all of the seasons in our lives, all of the seasons around us. We even have the four times of the day. So. Four is a really, really important number because it is about balance. It's about acknowledging that circle. The circle is always moving in fours. Um, the world is always moving in fours. And so you really have to just acknowledge that beauty uh, and that simplicity as well. So this is the uh, Cherokee Morning or the Four Directions song. When they are whole. When they are whole. Isn't it a different drum this one's been, one been calling to me lately, and it's got a special story.
than the asshole. So, um, a story about this drum. So, it used to be a lot bigger, like a lot, a lot bigger. Uh, I think um, sometimes we forget to be humble, and I think it's important that creator of life checks us, or as I say, the Thunderbird will check us. But um, when this drum was a lot bigger, it was a lot thicker. It was probably about that much further out. So this is a this is much smaller than the incarnation it was before. Um, but it, uh, I used it in many different events. It was wonderful. Uh, but then I went in for hip surgery. And as I went in for hip surgery, it was hanging uh, on the wall in a bag. Um, and then when I went under the knife, my mom heard a really loud boom from my bedroom. And she ran in there to figure out what was wrong. And then when she opened up my drum bag, there was a slice right across the drum. And so I was like, oh, that's crazy. So she brought it to me, and it was identical to the slice that they had taken out of my hip, which was crazy. And um, so it had such power and had such strength. So after I got out of the hospital, after I was able to stand again, after I was able to walk again, and after I was able to create again, um, I made two drums. So I made this drum, which is much smaller incarnation. But I used that same high to make this drum. And then the second drum that I made was small. And a friend of mine actually carries that drum with her now. Uh, and it was just such a beautiful reminder of how deeply connected we can be to something. I was so deeply connected. And I am deeply connected to all the drums that I create or all the drums that I help create. Um, and it's just that, that subtle reminder that Creator sometimes gives us or the Thunderbird gives us that, uh, you know, Everything has a spirit. Everything has a spirit. My drums all have spirits. You know, even when we look at the spirits that we create, they have a spirit. Or, you know, we, of course, our pets have spirits. But everything around us has a spirit. Even our home has a spirit. And so it's about really acknowledging and recognizing the spirit of everything, the essence of everything. And that was that reminder for me. This drum. And so I needed to really bring it forward and play it because I haven't played it in a really long time. So I've been carrying my other drum for a while. But um, yeah, whenever we need things or whenever we need those lessons, those things come forward for us. And so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on here because this is a hot mess over here. Actually, it's not. It's really wonderful. And so um, I've been making uh, ribbon skirts with um, a friend of mine and her daughter and also um, my girls, which has been really beautiful and lovely to be able to share with them and uh, talk about teachings with them, which has been nice, but also to create something together. There's something really powerful in creation, um, you know, in sitting down and mentoring and teaching um, and just deeply connecting uh, with each other and with, um, you know, making something new and uh, with all of this stuff here. So we've been making ribbon skirts and the ribbon skirt it, it means many different things in many cultures, but um, to me, it's it's not just something you wear. It's something that you are. It's uh, a story. Every every ribbon, ribbon skirt has a story. So the one that I'm wearing today, it teaches me about um, the medicine wheel and honoring that balance. Um, and so I'm gonna gonna pull it up so you can kind of check it out. But on it, so it tells us also the story of who I am. All my ribbon skirts always have a stripe of blue to represent my voice. Um, the white here, it actually has music notes in it. So it teaches me about the voice that I share through music, through song, and that spirit that pours through me when I, when I share my songs. Uh, of course, the red being the blood that runs through our veins. Also, that red is that connection to our physical bodies and the medicine world. And then the yellow is that sun, uh, that grandfather sun that reminds us to really stay strong and wake up every morning and have that hope for a brand new day. Uh, but that's that balance of the medicine wheel that's on my skirt. And even the pattern on my skirt, it almost looks like little uh, beaded flowers. So um, with the Métis, as well as the Korean Anishinaabe aspects of who I am, uh, beading was a huge thing. It was our way to express ourselves and every bead had a story in of itself. Like how was it created? How would we string everything together? It tells the story of who we are. Um, and so with our ribbons, each color represents something. Um, to ourselves. And so what uh, pink represents to me might be something completely different than what pink represents to someone else. So it's really about engaging not only with the teachings that someone else might share with you, but also creating your own being, your own aspect, your own spirit that you'll be wearing. So that's just what regalia is. Regalia isn't a costume. 
because it's not for Halloween, not pretending that you're something else, but it's who you are. It's the essence of who you are. It's your very core. It's your very being. And this is why I'm so thankful to be able to share it. Um, and the teachings behind the ribbon skirt, um, well, the women, uh, we have our skirt because that's our direct connection to Mother Earth. It's so that Mother Earth can connect with us more deeply. Um, it also gives us that ability to freely move. But when we look at a skirt, it looks like a teepee. And the teepee itself represents the woman because everything within it, it's life, it's protection, it's, you know, that, that warmth and comfort um, that, you know, our beautiful mothers provide um, or women provide in our, in our communities. And also two spirit people would do that as well. So two spirit people usually would have two teepees, um, but women would own the teepees in the nation as well as two spirit people. But um, so they would make sure that the teepee was set up properly and was taken down in a good way. And they were responsible for everything within the teepee because the teepee is sick, just like the women are, uh, are sacred as well. Because you cannot touch anything beneath a woman's skirt without her permission, just like you cannot enter a teepee without a woman's permission. And um, if they were set up wrong, you would have to get them to set up it up, set it up again. If uh, you know a man came back from the hunt or a family member came back from the hunt and uh, they had done something wrong, their stuff would be outside the teepee and they get to get out. <laughs> so it's really um, about honoring you know, that sacredness that we are as women, as life bearers, as life givers, but as those connections to community um, and who we let in, that's our decision. It's no one else's decision. Nobody can govern what happens within my TV, within my skirt. So, um, but the colors and the expression on them, it's the same thing like when we uh, color outside of a TV. We do it in ceremony. Um, it's, the colors are very intentional. The shapes are very intentional. With the ribbons, those stories, the stories of those colors, the stories that we are trying to portray on our uh, skirts are very intentional. And so it's a blessing to be able to share these things. And it's a blessing to be able to wear our regalia again, because for many generations, we couldn't. We weren't allowed to really express ourselves outwardly. We had to kind of hide and everything went underground. But now it's really starting to become um, common. It's accepted now. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for our ability to share in a meaningful way. Um, and so with that, I'm going to actually sing the Women's Honor song. Uh, which is on a Gaia. I shared it last week, but it's really been in my head all week because I think uh, it's really important to just honor who we are um, as women, as the caregivers, uh, as the care, the keepers really of our communities because the women draw everyone together. We're seeing this influx of very strong women and really strong two-spirit people come forward. And that's because it's a time of change. When that time is here, a time of change, that's when we see a lot more women and a lot more two-spirit people taking, you know, the, the reins, so to speak, because we're leading people with gentleness and kindness into a new way of being. And we need to do that um, through connection. So uh, I will sing Strong Woman's Song. Or no, sorry. The Women's Honor Song. So Anagaya is uh, Cherokee. Um, Apache? Cherokee, I think. Yeah, but, uh, it's from Joan Henry. Arapaho. My bad. <clears throat> Hana Gaya, we have we have we have we we have we we have we have we have we have we have we have we Hey, we are, we know, we know, we we, oh, hey, we are, we high, 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 we high,
incredible people who are doing incredible work in the community and if it wasn't for this technology we couldn't continue to connect the way that we do um, from home of all things so I'm very very thankful and humbled for that. I think it's really important to just approach gratitude. Um, I've been having this conversation a lot with my son like we have to be thankful for all that we have. You know I'm so thankful that I have a beautiful home and I'm thankful that I have you know a wonderful family and that we're not you know, stressed out and that we're all healthy and well and, you know, that we have that ability to connect with each other um, without leaving the home. And um, I think sometimes we get a little overwhelmed with what we do want that we forget about what we do have. And so that's uh, really that place that I'm trying to come from. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to share um, just uh, the community bird song. The, this is the song that, that came to me. Um, and I, I shared it a few times, but um, this song is really about connecting with your community and hearing each other's voices fully and completely um, and really about acknowledging. So when I hear this song, I hear uh, the, the blue jay. The blue jay always calls to me. Um, she's my spirit animal. And blue jays are just amazing because um, if there is an abandoned bird, they will go and actually check up on it. And they can actually um, mimic different bird calls and different bird sounds to make that animal feel comfortable or make that um, that other bird feel comfortable. But it also warns different animals. Like if there's um, a hawk coming or an eagle coming or an owl coming uh, and they know it's coming, they will call out just to warn all of the other animals to be like, you don't go hide or else you're going to be food. And so it reminds us about um really taking care of each other uh, in, in with our voices and with our words and how we sometimes have to be gentler with our words in order to teach things in a good way. And so, yeah, this is um, this is the community bird song. I also call it the Blue Jay song, um, but it's really about acknowledging all of us together. Um, and yeah, oh, my cat just moved. I almost stepped on him. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to have a sip of water before I start. <laughs> Thank you. We are, we are. Yeah, we are. 
go back and revisit it and learn the songs I think that's pretty important and so the songs that I share um if they're not mine uh, I explain where they've come from and I think that's really important you need to be able to acknowledge where things have come from to know their story it's just like people we can't judge people without knowing their story it's just like those songs we can't share them without knowing their story and so um it's such a blessing to be able to share the stories along with it because it seems like it just it adds so much more it adds a depth to what we're learning and what we're sharing and what we're hearing and what we're seeing. Um, that depth is really what should be connecting us. And I think a lot of times we watch programs and we forget of all of the things that goes on behind the scenes to create something. And it's like these songs, sometimes we hear them and we forget of all of the things that have brought them to fruition, to this light, to this life and all that we've gone through to keep the songs remaining strong. Um, and so it's such a, it's a gift to be able to really hear them again and still and be able to share them in a meaningful way. And so um, I'm going to share another song. <laughs> I'm going to share uh, the Thunderbird song has really been in my head all this week, uh, just because of those incredible storms that we have been getting here in Mohinsis. Um, they've just been lighting up the skies and rumbling the windows in our home and um, they're freaking out the cats a little bit. <laughs> but uh, the storms are so, they're so healing. They remind us of what's important. They remind us sometimes things need to get a little crazy and you know sometimes the worst things happen but for the right reasons and it's really about um, acknowledging and honoring those teachings and so the Thunderbird has really gotten me through or the Thunderbird song I should say has really gotten me through a lot of um, hard times. So um, nine years ago I would I was hit by a truck literally hit by a truck and uh, I couldn't walk for about a month and a half and um, I've had four major hip surgeries because of this accident. It was brutal. Um, I have shoulder problems because it popped my shoulder out of joint, popped it back in, popped both my femurs out of my sockets and rammed them back in, smashed a bunch of my teeth. I'm going to deal with those hopefully within the next year. Um, but it really put my life into perspective of what was important and also what was the path that I was on. 
obviously I wasn't on the right path and I was ignoring the right path. Um, and our Thunderbird does that. So if we're not on the right path, it'll kind of nudge us like, go this way, go this way, go this way, until finally it's like, go that way. And sometimes when it gives us that really hard push, it's not comfortable. So the little nudges, those little pushes in the right direction are what we need to listen to. And that's what our Thunderbird is. Our Thunderbird is our intuition. Uh, it's the intuition that kind of leads us forward. <laughs> um, and it's Mom, also... The girls just let both the cats outside. That's okay. I'll figure it out after. Okay. I, I got 10 minutes left. Sorry. Sorry. My apologies. <laughs> I got 10 minutes. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Thunderbird. Yes. <laughs> That's the beauty of doing things from home when you have kids. Things happen. Uh, but... Uh, the Thunderbird really, uh, it's our ancestors pushing us forward. It's our intuition, which is never, ever wrong. It's that little mini Thunderbird that's inside us. It's our spirit going, we'll do that. And anytime we ignore it, that's when we get into trouble. But in the same respect, when we see someone or meet someone or are on the right path, our Thunderbird is like, this is the way, this is the way. And sometimes we second guess ourselves or we doubt ourselves. And we doubt that Thunderbird that's leading us. And that's when we get into trouble when we start to doubt. So it's really about letting go of your fear and letting go of our doubt and just trusting what your path is moving forward. So um, the Thunderbird is our ancestors, right? It teaches us really about honoring and acknowledging our ancestors that have brought us here and those future generations that are yet to be born and reminds us that the path that we take is theirs as well. Um, and so when we say the Thunderbird, it's about letting things go. It's about honoring those bad things that have happened to us, but knowing that they've happened for a good reason. And sometimes, you know, we don't see it right away, but five, 10, 15 years later, we might actually see it once we get to that place, reminding us that we can't go back. We can't change the past. We can only acknowledge it and honor it and give thanks for it and then move forward. Because if it wasn't for that horrible car accident, I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't you know, be sharing my teachings and my songs and my stories. I wouldn't have been teaching at schools. I wouldn't have been, you know, leading drum workshops or um, sharing all of these songs and stories and teachings. And I'm so thankful every day that it led me where I am. I mean, yeah, it sucks getting hit by a truck, but it definitely <laughs> led me to a good place. And sometimes we don't see that and, until, you know, for a while in retrospect, right? It's time 57, you're not quite sure what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, so this is the Thunderbird song. <clears throat> And for a song that actually had a lot of meaning, quite <laughs> song and then I think I'm going to go straight into the bear song. So the healing song is uh, called the crying song or the wailing song and in it you can hear the tears and it used to be a ceremonial song but I'm so blessed so many different elders who had carried it forward and we'd sung it in lodges and we'd sung it at ceremony has said that this is the time to share it with all of our nations with all of our all of the world because we're going through so many changes and we need that healing we need that gentleness we need that ability to cry together to grieve together and to heal together and move forward. And so that's what the song really helps us do. This is why I think it's so important to be able to share it uh, every every Tuesday <laughs> or every, almost every day, actually, I sing it. But um, it's really about acknowledging that we need that time to just let out our emotions and heal together, uh, all together as a community. And the only way we can do that is by letting things go. 
Um, and so this song uh, is Cree, the Cree healing song, uh, but we, of course, drum it in four rounds. The third round, though, we actually stop drumming. And in that silence, that's that invitation to um, pray in the way that you pray. So it's asking for those things and setting those intentions for the things that you need, getting rid of the things that you don't. And so really holding those people in your heart or holding yourself in your heart and those things that you need help with, um, the things that you know people need help with, that healing for not only ourselves, not only our family and friends, but for the world and for our beautiful Mother Earth, our standing people, our flyers, you know, our crawling people, all of our animals, our four-legged. So and all of our relations, we always say all my relations because we're related to everything, to everyone, and everyone's part of that circle. And so if we lose even one member of that circle, it's weaker, it's not as strong, and there's a piece missing. And so um, this song really honors those. It honors our loss as well as our coming together. Um, but if you feel overcome with emotion, that's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to heal because that's how we need to heal. And man, did I figure that out this weekend when I was crying. It's the first time I've actually cried within a sweat um, in a really long time. But it felt so good. So it was needed. It was necessary. And it was my way of healing. And that's what tears are for healing. So this is the uh, creaking song, crying song, or healing song. share somewhere we go is bear song i've been thinking a lot about the bear um i'm honestly i'm praying for the bears right now there's so many uh cubs that have been taken away from their moms and their moms have been um you know killed and we have amazing people here that have the facilities and have the ability to take care of these bears um and unfortunately our government has been flip-flopping and waffling so much that these bears are not giving you know, getting getting the opportunity for the healing and the health that they need. Um, they're being over legislated and they're being sold off to zoos and other things. Um, but that's a rant for another time. Uh, I really I think it's really important to pray for all of our relations and the bears teach us so much. They teach us so much about who we are, about building community, about honoring who we are, our voices. Uh, but also about taking only what we need from the world, because when we take more than our share, other people are without. And the bear knows that. The bear taught us that. And why aren't we listening to those teachings? Um, it's really important to be able to acknowledge that the bears are, you know, their brothers, they're our family, and they have so many lessons. We just sit with them. We just watch them. They teach us so much, um, including how to take care of our family, um, including how to take care of our global family, because they always know how to lead the world better than what they get brought here. Um, but also they warn us when things are wrong. And so I honor the bear, I honor those teachings, and I'm praying for those cubs that are really struggling at this moment because of our short-sightedness and our 
I don't know, humans, we think we know better, but we're, really not. we're actually not as amazing as the animals and the plants. They have the things we just need to take attention of them. And so this is the Anishinaabe bear stuff. to share everybody's welcome i think it's important to share our teachings and our understanding and our knowledge and um who have learned from many different elders and knowledge keepers and uh so many beautiful people in our communities that really fuel it and they're doing incredible work so um hi hi my witch and uh all my relations have a great week